Well, welcome to the Age Changers show, uh, where it is our mission to elevate the vision of the church to where they see their identity through God's eternal uh, purpose, where we also equip believers to live with an eternal perspective, and finally, where we empower believers to live a supernatural God-sized life in faith-filled obedience. Well, I'm at the table and I'm by myself because uh, we are going to communicate some uh, updates and some new things that uh, about where we're at with the Age Changer show. Um, I have the privilege and the opportunity to uh, have a a personal coach and mentor in my life, a leadership coach. And uh, as we have launched Summit Life Ministries and as we have uh, started this little pioneering journey of launching a new ministry, uh, we had a moment of conversation where we were just talking about evaluating the things that we're doing and the things that we have launched. And one of those things has been the Age Changer Show. And as you know, we've tried to have daily uh, content as far as a, um, an episode or a segment every single day. Uh, we've also had some micro content uh, that we've tried to publish as well as just some exhortations. And one of the things that he gave me as feedback was he just shared, Lynn, I really love the show but I just do not have time to watch it every single day. Um, and then sometimes he said that he was able to catch some of the episodes, but he just didn't have the time to watch the entire episode. He said, so have you thought about changing it up and maybe only doing one or two uh, podcast or age changer show a week? And that would allow us, uh, those that are listening and those that are viewing, to uh, make it a part of our uh, a, a list of podcasts or a number of podcasts that people listen to on a weekly basis and that it would be more intentional instead of just trying to surf uh, when, when things are published. But we would be very intentional to have it as one of the podcasts that we listen to or uh, because of the lack of everyday content and people not being able to keep up with the series uh, that we're doing or segments that we're doing within a series, um, we could be more intentional to, to stay up. It would allow us the opportunity to stay up uh, with the content because not all of the content is standalone content. It builds uh, upon one segment, builds upon another as we explore a topic over a longer period of time. And so I contemplated uh, what was shared with me and I think that uh, not only for uh, those that are listening but also for uh, those that are helping with production uh, of us trying to produce that type of volume every week, we're going to maybe reduce the number of episodes that we're doing and so we want to announce today uh, that starting this week, we're only going to do one episode uh, per week. There will be some weeks where we do two uh, because we are wanting to do some uh, special episodes where we bring people to the Age Changers show and the Age Changers podcast and we conduct more of an interaction, dialogue, and, and an interview uh, with those that are leaders in the body of Christ or, or believers that uh, are involved in an aspect of God's will and there's a powerful testimony that's unfolding in their life that we feel would encourage more and more people in the body of Christ. So we are going to be doing a number of those and we've talked to some individuals about coming to the Age Changer Show and, and setting down with us and having those type of discussions. But probably that'll be about twice a month um, and maybe even once a month at first. But in regards to uh, teaching, uh, that has been really the central focus of the Age Changer Show. We're probably gonna reduce the volume of the content that we've been putting out 
and uh, hopefully it will allow people to intentionally join us um, because we will not be sharing as much as we had been. And, and if it is uh, on a podcast, you can uh, then subscribe to the podcast. And we encourage you to do that. Subscribe to the podcast, subscribe uh, to the YouTube channel. It's where you can receive a notification uh, when episodes are updated. So I wanted to give you that a uh, little bit of a ministry shift that hopefully uh, can grow our audience uh, even, even more and that it provides an opportunity for people to stay up with us as we go through the content. And of course, all the content that we've already shared and have been sharing is archived uh, for you. And so you can uh, go back on the YouTube channel and watch any of those episodes. Also, we're going to continue to do small micro content uh, where the time frame for that is just a few minutes. And hopefully that allows people to just catch some of the stuff that we're saying and, and that we're... Uh, uh, declaring to the body of Christ. We're also probably going to do some Facebook Live things uh, that will just be updates about uh, the ministry and where we're going with it. So uh, I hope that that shift, you can uh, stay with us and and we will also publish that on, on a live Facebook post as well. Well, I want to get started and we have been sharing uh, last week on a series that I said that I feel is a very relevant series uh, that as we begin the new year, I feel that it's very important content that I felt a, a tremendous burden to convey. And some of this content I've shared before, um, and I said that last week, I, I just have a, a real burden and passion to help equip the body of Christ, cultivate a hearing heart. So last week we started a, a segment in a series that we called uh, The Hearing Heart or A Heart That Can Hear, and we're going to continue that content today. The reason why it's so relevant is because of the unparalleled and unprecedented spiritual times in which we live. The Apostle Paul talked about the greatest peril that believers would face in the last days would not be uh, external perils that are natural. And so there are a lot of apocalyptic events that are described uh, in the Jesus's teaching about the last days and the, what the prophets spoke in the Old Testament. They always described many uh, geological and geographical things that would happen in lands and regions uh, as God poured out temporal judgments and there would be disruption. He did talk about natural threats to humanity or natural external threats, earthquakes and storms and, and violence. But Paul said the greatest peril that believers would face would be spiritual peril. And that would be that there would be unprecedented uh, spiritual deception. That the spirit of Antichrist uh, would be at work in the world to undermine the very foundations. And Paul, at, at the writing of his letter uh, to the Thessalonian church, he said, this spirit is already, the undercurrent of it is already at work uh, in the earth. But obviously, uh, we see something that has been latent, something that has been um, hidden, now being more overt in its, uh, the spiritual activity of the spirit of Antichrist being more overt uh, to subvert uh, the foundations of godliness and righteousness and the things uh, that belong to the kingdom of God. So we just see multiple prongs of attack of the spirit of Antichrist to, to wage war against the saints and to wear them out. And, and when we think about a spirit of Antichrist, we think of it as that which 
opposes Christ. And that is true. And we would never want to minimize that fact. Something that is anti something means that it is opposed to it. But it also is a replacement for, a substitute for. And so the spirit of Antichrist is going to be, now when it is fully manifested, we are going to see that it is a substitute for the Christian faith. It is going to be a substitute for Christ. It is going to be a substitute for everything uh, that we have received as truth that has been revealed uh, in and by Christ Jesus. And so we have to be a people that are lovers of truth. Matter of fact, Paul, in that same segment where he described the mystery of iniquity, And he described the man of lawlessness, which would epitomize the Antichrist, which would epitomize this spirit of lawlessness. Uh, He said that God would permit it because of the rejection of people in their love of the truth. And so I appreciated one brother who put it this way. He said, our only protection from deception is not the fear of deception but it is our passionate love for the truth. And when we say the love for the truth, it, it's not just a love for the Bible or what's expressed in the Bible, because from Genesis to, Genesis to Revelation, uh, the word of God is truth. It is the, the God-breathed, inspired word of God. But when we talk about a love for the truth, we're talking about a love for God himself, because the Holy Spirit who is God, is the spirit of truth. And so we can't say that we love the truth when we are not passionate in our pursuit of God. So last week, what I shared was that I don't want us just to go through this content about developing a heart that hears simply because uh, we want to be in the know of of some piece of prophetic information of some event or something that's happening. Uh, No, we want to love truth because we love God. I want to hear God's voice because it's God's voice. It's not because it just empowers me with more revelation or information, spiritual information or knowledge. I really want to know the heart of God. I really want to know him for who he is. I want to value the voice because it is the voice of God. So in this uh, teaching, which hopefully we can reframe a little bit from sometimes teachings that have been taught about hearing God's voice, it's just not about you know, being spiritually savvy and knowing and discerning times and seasons. I really want us to be a people that who may be facing last days and end time realities that we just love his voice because of who he is and that we want to follow the lamb. Uh, No matter how difficult, no matter how hard, we would just want to follow the lamb wherever he leads, wherever he goes. Now, I want you, if you have your scriptures or if you could open up uh, your scriptures in your device, and I want us to look at a passage of scripture uh, that is found in John chapter 7. And John chapter 7, verse 16, uh, Jesus was um, teaching about how that his teaching, what he was conveying as a as a a uh, master, as a rabbi, as a teacher, why his teaching was unique to other rabbis that were teaching. And he said this in verse 16, he says, my teaching is not mine. In other words, it did not originate from me, but his who sent me. So Jesus was saying that his teaching was not, you know, a his own personal theology. It was not based upon him coming up with his own set of theological ideas and premises. But he said, really, what I have been taught 
I'm teaching to you, and I have been directly taught from God. Now, that is much different than many of the rabbinical schools uh, that existed during Jesus' time because there was this chain of tradition that many of the rabbinical schools and the contemporary rabbis that lived alongside Jesus in his times, they would say that they were students of certain uh, rabbis and their theological interpretations. And so it, when they would teach, it would always be um, a reference to another rabbi's authority. But one of the reasons why they marveled at the teaching of Jesus is that it said that he spoke as one who had authority. In other words, he wasn't just a scribe that was recapitulating what a certain rabbi in a previous generation said about what another rabbi in another previous generation had said. And so there was this chain of tradition. Jesus spoke firsthand about the scriptures. And what he taught was in a very direct way that he knew exactly um, what God's intent was and so that his interpretation was clear of any scripture that he taught. And so there was this direct repre representation of the heart and mind of God when he taught. And so an example of that is when he was teaching on the sermon, what we call the Sermon on the Mount, when he said, Moses has said, and it has been said to you, but I say unto you. And so he spoke as one who had great authority as though he had direct knowledge of the heart intent and intent of God in what God had spoken through his word. That was much different than the rabbis and how they approached the scripture and how they taught the scripture. And so they ask him about, you know, why do you say what you do? How do you know what you know? And he said that. He goes, it's because the teaching is not mine, but I have directly received it from God. But then he makes an interesting statement in verse 17. He said, if anyone's will is to do God's will, he will know. I'm going to read that phrase again. If anyone wills to do God's will, he will know whether this teaching is from God or whether I am speaking on my own authority. So Jesus gave us a principle here of how to hear his voice and how to keep hearing his voice. And many times Jesus phrased it this way. And we talked about that a little last week when he said, whoever has a heart to hear, he will be permitted to hear. Now, in many of our translations, it translates it, whoever has an ear to hear, let them hear. But really, the, the understanding of that phrase is whoever has a hearing heart, whoever, whoever has cultivated their heart to hear, will be permitted to hear by God. So when Jesus said, if anyone's will is to do God's will, he will know. So I want us, as we go into more of this teaching, I want us to set our will. And when we, we're going to unpack what the heart is uh, in the coming sessions. But when we talk about the, the soul of man and, and in our heart, uh, there is a reflection of the soulish part of our being. And our soul really is represented in three parts, our mind, our will, and emotions. And what we want is we want our mind and, and our emotions that, the, you know, what, how we feel about things, all to be in alignment, our will, our thoughts, and our emotions. We want them all to be 
not contradicting each other, not, not opposing each other, but we want what we believe and what we think to be in agreement with what we're going to do. And then we want to feel strongly about what we believe and, and, and what we perceive to be the course of action that God has wanted us to take with our life based upon the truth that he has revealed to us. So we want our mind, our will, and our emotions all to be united in a threefold cord that is joined together, knitted together, in union together, in alignment with the will and the purpose and the leading of the Holy Spirit. So if, if, if my will is not in alignment with the truth that God has revealed to me, and, and this is truly what I believe, then there is a phrase that I use quite often. I can state values, but they're really not my actual value. I can say that I value uh, winning the lost, but if I'm not actually attempting to share the gospel with people, then it's really not truly what I believe. There's a disparity between what I do in my actions that's based upon choices that I make, the assertion of my will in saying, I will do this, I will obey, or I, I will yield my will to the will of God. So it's very important that there is no um, division within you, but there is a, a unification of the realm of your soul to fully cooperate with God's purpose. And so our, what we believe must be united with our will. And then it releases great joy in us uh, as God delights in us in our obedience and our love for him. We feel what he feels when his people love truth. So uh, that was a little bit of, of going off, but I, I really want us to see how it's so important that we are united in how God made us, spirit, soul, and body. But Jesus made that statement. He said, if you choose, if you assert and yield your will to the will of God, if you make a quality decision, a decision of excellence to know God's will, God is willing to reveal to you that will. God is not, again, resistive, or he is not opposed to you knowing his voice. Because again, God is a prolific communicator and he communicates by using all means possible. He wants his sons and daughters to know his voice, to know his will, to know his calling on their life, to know their identity, to know their destiny. I could go on and on in various aspects of his purpose and his will that he is so desperately wanting to reveal to his people. The issue is, am I desiring and wanting to know God's voice? Is it, is it a, the premium spiritual value? My love for him and because I love him, I wanna know his heart, I wanna know his voice. Is it of premium value that I press into knowing? Well. If there is an individual that you want to know because you love them, you really want to know them more, then one of the things you're going to do is you're going to position yourself. Um, and many of us have fallen in love with a, a person that has become our spouse or they've had a significant relationship. We've desired a significant relationship with them. Um, you know the measures that that individuals take to get to know someone. They will cross land and sea uh, to be with the one that they love. They're willing to spend as much time as possible with them. I think an uh, issue is that sometimes we become bored or familiar in our relationship with someone and we think that we know all there is to know about them. And so we begin to neglect the relationship. This happens in marriages. This happens um, in many, many contexts. 
but this is what we have to do. We are only beginning our knowing of the heart of God. And so I want to continue to keep my will soft and pliable to know him, to pursue him. I want the Holy Spirit to, when he draws me for me to respond, to hear him, to walk with him, to commune with him, and to passionately pursue him. Again, the Apostle Paul said this. He said, I want to apprehend the one who has apprehended me. I want to pursue him the way he pursued me. And so uh, I know I shared quite a bit about just kind of where we're at with the Age Changer show. and I didn't have a lot of time to unpack content, uh, but this is where we're going to continue to journey together in the word. And we're going to talk about, again, cultivating, developing a heart that is in pursuit of God. All right, well, bless you guys and thank you for joining us today. And uh, I hope you join us again at the next Age Changer Show. Bless you.